Today's episode is brought to you by Gray Block Pizza, 1811 Pico Boulevard, on the way to the beach in Los Angeles. Gray Block, get that hitter. And they used to have a big girl bus, they called her Clutch. And that's what they call her. Because she was uh, conceived in a um, standard vehicle, you know? So, that's how that works, baby. Um, good to be here, man. I'm just an egomaniac with an uh, inferiority complex. And I'm just trying to come up. Who isn't? Come on. This is the Come Up with Eddie 9 v I'm on a come up, yeah. Feels real good after I've been so blue. Mm-hmm. He's on a come up. He's on a come up. I'm on a come up. It feels so good to have a brand new view. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I just broke up with my baby. Come on. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, I just moved up to Lucky Street when the mayor came and said to me, "You're on the come up." Come on. You want to come up, You're baby? Come up. And it's plain to see between you and me, we got so much love in chemistry. It's gonna come up. It's gonna come, come up. up. Well, good things keep on coming. Come up. Come up. There you go. Good things that keep on coming. And I ain't going to keep on running. I'm on the come up. And that is Eddie 9V. They call him Eddie 9V. And people look at Eddie and they say, well, damn, man. And that's Eddie 9V. Good to be here, man. I'm alive. You're alive. And uh, what's going on? It is, hell, it's March. It's the end of March. It's 2021. And a lot of people didn't think this was going to happen. And I'm not naming names, but Mayans, dude. So if you know any Mayans out there, Maya... Who they got? Maya Rudolph, Maya Angelo, um, um. There's a couple of Mayans out there, still remaining, and they don't believe in the calendar. So must be nice. Must be nice, Mayans. To just somebody invite you over and you say, "Oh well, yeah, I don't believe in you know. Oh, Friday doesn't exist, so I'm not going to be there." Or somebody says, hey, come to my birthday party. And they say, hey, well, you know, uh, the world ended 11 years ago. So <laughs> I'm not bringing a present. You know, that's the most Mayan shit ever, bro. That's, that's so Mayan. How is that not a TV show? That's so Mayan. And we can actually get to the bottom of what these Mayans were saying. Because the Mayans, I mean, whatever. I don't want to give them any more credit, but you know what they did. They sold us short. That's what they did. Uh, That song, again, was called The Come Up with Brighter Days by Eddie 9V. And that's a nice tune right there. And, you know, um, what's going on? What's going on in your world? We got a nice episode for you today. I want to continue to suggest to people that they send in unique videos and things that they want us to discuss on here. Uh, also on theovon.com is where you can upload the video or you can email it to tpwproducer at gmail or gmail.com right there. So, um, what's happening? Well, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in the uh, original studio, baby. Let's go. So if you need me, I'm right here. Knock, knock. Who's there? Moi, baby, French me, daddy. 
because I'm he. Uh, look, I'm, I'm. You know, I'm multi. You don't have to be in one place anymore. When I was young, you had to be in one place. If you wanted to, you know, if you wanted to talk to a man who sold matches, you had to go. He was only at the match shop. Or if you wanted to um, see a man about a, you know, a cantaloupe or a horse or anything, if you wanted to talk to a, a, you know, somebody that sold belts, you know, or outdoor equipment, yard seating, then you needed to go to a specific spot and meet him. But now, people can be anywhere. You see how I just did that? I'm in three spots, Daddy. I'm in three spots right there if you're looking on the video. Um, yeah, nice to be here. I did some comedy last night. Got up out there at... um at uh they had a place over in Los Angeles it's like between two buildings and it's you can hear people you can hear I'll be honest you can hear gay dudes swallowing pills right on the other side of the fence I mean it's uh you know there's a lot of that kind of activity you know outdoor barbiturate use and a lot of men trying to say they're just buddies but they're also you know, one of them has a condom in his sock. So, you know, what they call, they used to call it Christmas friends. When I was growing up, they would refer, if they, if they had men, when I was growing up, they didn't have probably maybe 70 or 80 gay men. You know, overall. Okay? And so, you know, you didn't, there wasn't a lot of, now there's a thousands. You know, you have gay, you have gay pride parade, you have, you know, gay, uh, you know, you have bathhouses, you have, um, what do you have? You have uh, Kathy Griffin, you have all of the, you know, everything you could want. You got, um, you know, you got little, you know, sex toys and stuff where you could also do a little bit of coke off the end of it. You know, they got everything that. You know, they got man, you know, every, you know, they got swing sets that uh, vibrate. They got everything you could want for gay culture now. But when I was young, they didn't have that. And sometimes you would see men being with other men and they called it Christmas friends. Oh, that's, those guys are Christmas friends. Or they would say, oh, them boys is, uh. You know, um, they said there's, oh, those boys are brothers. You know, they tried to trick you if you were a kid. And they didn't want you knowing that gay existed. Because that was kind of the time I grew up in. They didn't want everybody knowing that gay was a an option. They were, it was still kind of under wraps. It was kind of covert. You know, it was like... Um, you could get it was it was available, but it wasn't readily available. It was like these top shot NBA basketball cards. You gotta if you're not on the website at a certain time, you're not you're not gonna get it. And that's kind of how it was with gay back then. You know, it just wasn't readily available. So every now and then you see men and they and your your parents would say, "Oh, those those guys are fe those those guys are unique brothers." Or those guys are cousins, you know, and you'd be like, well, they're cousins. That's why are they, you know, wrestling and kind of kissing in that, you know, in the front of that, uh, in the front of that um, Pontiac. And nobody had a lot of answers for you. But anyway, that is The Come Up by Eddie 9V. And um, what's going on in my life, man? Oh, yeah, I got into a new home. And it's kind of like, I never, you know, I went out of town. So I, 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 you know, I'm back here in Los Angeles for a week. And so I'm like, whoa, I literally was leaving the house. And I was like, well, who takes care of the house while I'm gone? You know, who, what, like, is, is everything okay? I literally looked, I was like, hey, you guys going to be okay? And I'm just like talking to the furniture. And so I just... It was kind of nerve. Just I don't know. I didn't think about who is taking care of the home while 
because I never owned it. So now I'm just like, okay, every, you know, I'll open up the cupboard. I'll be like, all right, you guys be good, you know. And it's just like a little spice rack in there or, you know, some thyme and some, um, uh, what else they had in there? Cinnamon. So, um, but that's been kind of interesting. Just kind of feeling that out, you know, uh, can't decide if I want a hat on or off, you know, you ever feel like that? I get like that sometimes. You know, a hat is just a little apartment for your head, really. And that is, uh, that's legitimate. What's going on? Yeah, a lot of neat stuff. Yeah, so if you have some cool stuff, send it in. Um, we're going to get into some things on this episode. Uh, what's happening? What's happening kind of, like what happened this past week? I did some comedy sets over there that's what i was telling you about i did some comedy sets over there in uh in los angeles and they had uh you know it's i don't know i got in an argument with this one not an argument but like a confrontational moment kind of i guess um with this one female comedian and she uh I don't know. I've never seen this woman seem like she know has ever had an ounce of joy in her being. But um, anyway, uh, she got on me like about, I didn't have a mask on. I didn't have a mask on, and here's why: because nobody has them on anymore. That's what I'm saying. And I'm not. I, I've now spent time in Nashville. I've spent time in Los Angeles. I don't see them anymore. People don't got's dumb. And so that's like, well, you know, so she gets on to me and she like kind of like, oh, you don't think we should be wearing masks, you know? And I'm like, I, I just, you know, nobody has. Meanwhile, there is a, I don't want to say homeless guy, but a guy who, duh, you know, this dude is not. This guy hasn't been in a laundry room, I bet, in probably a year and a half. And he's defecating, bro. You know what I'm saying? Making freaking body rope, dog. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? Serving that booty isthmus. You know what I'm saying, bro. This dude's making them freaking dirty Floridas just rolling out of his boot. And so I... uh. Like nine feet away from us. And this lady's giving me a hard time. So. But I stood my ground, baby, and let my yapper shine. Um, so that was it. It was a little conversation. It was kind of exciting, though. It was kind of exciting. Um, I got to be in a Tesla. I got to be in a Tesla. And that was interesting because I'd never been in there. And it's real quiet. I almost felt like a snail, like a snail, like if you're in his little cage or whatever. Um, you know, or his butt. I don't know. What is that thing a snail has? His butt? Ugh, I never even thought about that. That a snail is just, just you know, he's just scooting around with his big butt behind him, really. With them apple bottom jeans, baby. And he scoots with the freaking fur, bro. The um, snail's got that freaking peach on him, boo-boo. You know it. He's got that booty. Uh, so anyway, I got to be in a Tesla. That was interesting. It Yeah, it doesn't feel... I like a, I like I like a little gasoline beneath me. I like knowing that if somebody mishandles a cigarette in the vehicle, we could all die. You know, call me old fashioned. That's, I, I like that. I just like something about it a little bit. I like when you get in a real classic vehicle, and a classic vehicle is, you know, that's a. 
it's something people are basically hoping that if their grandpa dies, he's going to give them. That's what it is. And some of those, when you put gasoline in them, it's like, mm, you sit in there, that thing, my God. I mean, you could feel the Lord just, it feels like the, you, just, you sit, it feel like the Lord's jerking you off, you know? Trying to bust you out at, a, at a, just a DNA level. Just really trying to just get you to skeet right out of your damn spine, baby. You know what I'm saying? Um. So. Yeah. So that was it. It was a. It was interesting to leave. Um. A house. It's just interesting to have a home. It's kind of scary, I guess. I've always kind of thought of myself. I think is kind of transient a little bit. You know, and I kind of like being a little bit transient. I like having the ability to go. And to come, you know what I'm saying, boy? <laughs> Just joking, guys. Jesus, man. <laughs> Take care of yourself, man. Um... But no, I realized that about I like my I like always having the ability to just kind of scoot off if I want to. You know, less hooks in the uh in the fish. And, and I realized that about myself. Even when it comes to anything, I always I like having one foot out the door. I'll be eating at the dinner table, but I'll be damned if I don't have one of my legs all the way out the door. Or at least hanging out the window or something. I'll at least leave my shoes over there. Because I got one foot out the door. It's just the way I've always been, kind of. You know, I think I just don't want to feel connected. I don't know. I think sometimes is that I don't want to feel connected, man. I want to, but... Man. You know, it's scary how much connection can... Uh, how debilitating it can almost be. How, I, yeah, I mean, it's a vulnerable thing just showing your glue to somebody, just saying, hey, here's the sticky parts of who I am. Does this work for you? Um, does this work for this? Um, yeah, it's interesting, man. It's really interesting. Uh, having something that is, uh, is a form of commitment for me is, uh, is interesting. So, uh, we got a good, a, a good, a good episode, I feel like. And I want to thank, uh, Nick Davis, the producer and, um, Sean, uh, Dugan over there and Riley Mao and, um, Colin Reiner and everybody who helps take care of this program. So what we got here is I'm having a little bit of that liquid death, baby. Mm. I didn't know water could be, I'll be honest with you. I didn't know water could have as much damn water in it. This water has the most water per water that I've ever seen, man, or been around. Um, we had a lot of people that submitted you know, we had a young fellow last week that called in. He couldn't decide a senior quote to leave into his uh, yearbook. And yearbook, man, I hope, I, have they discontinued yearbooks? I wonder that. I hope not. Because yearbooks was that, it was that end of the year thing. It was the last chance. For you to say what you wanted to say to that person. Hey, Jennifer, I hope you have a great summer. You got nice legs. You could say and sign it. And then here's the thing. You would close it and give it back to them. So they didn't know immediately where you signed it. It was almost like a time capsule for guys who were afraid to say something to a girl. And now you had all summer. You had all summer to wonder, oh, dang. 
does Jennifer know how I feel about her limbs? It was just different. It was a different time. Or you'd write, oh, Tiandra, good luck with the baby. You could write stuff like that. Because where I'm from, these girls got embryoed up, baby. You know? These things, man. I don't know if you've ever been to Embry Riddle University, but there was no, this was no laughing matter, bro. These gals got embryoed up, boy. Bitch better have my zygote. They was yoed out, baby, these girls. Um, I never will forget I lost a spelling bee in fifth grade to a pregnant girl. God bless her. Helena was her name. Named after her grandmother, who was also Helena. And a uh, beautiful girl. Not really beautiful, but nice girl with a baby. So, you know, when I had all, you know, I had all these things that she was cheating or she had a baby in her. It's, you know, she's running on, you know, because God puts that extra little batch of effort in you when you got a baby in you. You got a little brain powder flowing in your veins because it's, but you, you got to make a brain. So over the first couple months, you got little pieces of brain rolling through your body like Tetris. And then they meet up in there in the baby's head. So I'm thinking, oh, this lucky broad, the spelling bee came right along, you know, when she was just kind of uh, zigging that goat, you know what I'm saying? In that first trimester, dog. So I'm thinking every now and then they would ask her to spell this or spell that. Spell rattlesnake. You know? Spell shiffer robe. Spell panty. And she, right as she was thinking that a little piece of that baby brain would get, you know, lodged in the back of her, t you know, throat. And that would help her uh, get the word right. And I lost, I, I lost on inconvenience, I remember losing on. But it was a good time, man. It was the goodest of times and it was the worst of times. Uh, we got some senior quotes that came in. And so I want to get to some of those. Um, I want to thank everybody for hitting the hotline, 985-664-9503. People had recommendations uh, for senior quotes. All right, I want to say originally we got this call from a man right here. And we're going to get this, this fellow named Zachary, and let's get this call uh, so you can remember it. He needed a little help. Hey, Theo, what's up? This is Zachary from Illinois. I'm a senior in high school this year, and I'm in desperate need of a senior quote. And I thought, who better to give me a senior quote than the Theo Vaughn? So if you give me a, a funny one-liner. There you go. And there's Zachary right there who can't think of a sentence for himself and that's you know that's a male problem you got that sentence impotence dog and look i've been i've been halfway through a sentence and i can't get it all the way up i'll be honest you know some you just like hey i love to and you can't get it out or why don't or oh man i want to and that happens, Zachary. But we got some great submissions. People really wanted to uh, to offer some support for you, Zach. So let's get a few right here. Here we go. This is uh, from your boy Pat right here. Let's hear it from White Pat. What's up, Theo and team? It's Pat from Colorado. I got a su suggestion for our boy's senior quote issue. Uh, Theo, I think you'll get behind this one a little bit. Business in the front, party in the back, four years at this school, and I didn't learn jack. Gang, gang. There you go, brother. And I remember doing uh, mushrooms one time at school, and I remember thinking my shirt was a snake because I'd worn a felt-made shirt made out of pool table felt. They had a guy in our town for a while. His wife had died, and... uh and so he, he was doing, uh, making shirts out of felt out of pool table. You know, they had a bad batch of pool tables in this 
town next to us called Bogalusa, Louisiana. Someone had made pool tables and the wood that they used had termites in it. And beautiful tables, but they're disappearing. You know, you could barely get halfway through a game of damn nine ball and uh, one of the legs be missing off of the thing. You know, and now one of, y'all, one of the pockets is uphill suddenly. So uh, this fella in our town got the felt off of the tables that Green felt and made shirts out of them, beautiful shirts. And he marketed it as Christmas apparel. And, um... And so I got one, man. You know, I was lucky enough to cop one of them. There's only probably about 11 or 15 of them. And I got one, and I remember eating mushrooms and wearing it at school when I thought my arm was a snake. And that's one of the uh, side effects of eating uh, psilocybic mushrooms. It'll snake your arm out. You know what I'm saying? You'll be sitting there in class, and next thing you know, your arm is eating a white mouth. (laughs) You're like, damn, okay. Okay, we uh, we getting vibey today. Okay, today the science lesson is in my brain. So I'm, you know, geeked up. And uh, so I excuse myself from the classroom. And I try to excuse myself from my arms. But you can't do that. So I went into the uh, bathroom and I stayed in there for about four hours at school. In the bathroom and... Because I could, if things were a little more manageable in there. You know, you could pee or you could do the sink. Or you could, you know, you got to meet everybody. If there were kids you didn't know, everybody has to bathroom. And so that was the beauty of being in there was you got to meet people you didn't know. But um, the weird part was when you'd be in there and they'd come back to urinate for the second time. Because on average, people would urinate probably two and a half times during the day, three times. And uh, so when you saw some guys for the second time, they would that was a little weird. Because it's easy to kind of understand why somebody's in the bathroom one time. It's harder to understand why they're still in the bathroom hours later when you go back in. And they're still in there just doing toilet sink, 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 toilet sink. So, but that was high school, man. But that's a great senior quote right there. Thank you very much, little Pat. Colorado Pat, dog. That mountain cat. Pat. Onward. Let's hear another one that came in right here out of someone. Hey, Theo, what up? It's Steve out here in Black Mountain, North Carolina. What's up, Steve, out of Black Mountain? And um, and I'll be honest, you don't see a lot of blacks in the mountains, dude. That's really, you know, a lot of black people, I feel like, are more sea level. You know, prefer sea level or we're just above sea level. Sea level is also can be, I think, dangerous for more African Americans, but... um. Anyway, brother, thank you very much for calling in, man. Gang. I have a uh, senior quote submission for you. Everybody wants to contribute. However, nobody wants to be contributed to. Therefore, the greatest gift you can give someone is to let them contribute to you. Peace. Yeah, that's a good one, man. That's a real thinker right there, Stevie. And I appreciate you. Yeah, and look, I can relate to that. I want to be, I'm terminally unique. I want to be anyway. I, 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 I want to be unique to a fault where it, even at my own detriment. Sometimes I want to be, it has to be my, it has to be unique to my own detriment. Um, yeah, it's hard to be want to be contributed to, to just accept people's, contributions if especially if you're used to handling things yourself uh, and that's a nice gift is to let somebody do something for you you know let somebody love you let somebody uh hug you let, you know let somebody have your last caramel baby your last uh butterscotch daddy thank you steve that's another great one you have right there zachary onward here we go what up, Theo? This is Bunjo. Uh, 
Maybe I'm coming from Croatia too, so. What's up, Bon Joe out of Croatia? And that's Croatia for you, dog. You can name somebody anything, baby. It's ba I mean, it's the damn white Detroit, bro. You can name somebody Tickle Me Alma, dog. You know what I'm saying? You can name somebody Sturgeon. I mean, you could name somebody damn uh, uh, Motocross. You'll meet a fella named Motocross over there by the ocean, by that Slovak uh, area. Onward. This is the wrong approach, but I remember I always used to sign this on people's yearbook as a quote. Uh, I just signed your crack. Now let's smoke some. I don't know. There's my quote. Thank you for letting me say that. Uh, and I love your show, Theo. You're the man. Thank you, Bon Joe. And I'm glad you're letting you guys make videotape over there in, uh, in Croatia, baby. And you be good over there. And you guys keep doing whatever you got to do, baby, to stay alive, baby. All right. And that is a good quote. Yeah, if you got to smoke crack. I never got to smoke crack. You know, and a lot of uh, people know that. You know, I never got to smoke crack in my life. And I've thought about Sometimes I think about, you know, not being sober just so I could go smoke it. Isn't that crazy? But, you know, we really should have somebody who is a crackhead or addicted to crack for a long time on here to talk about that. And I would love to have Mike Lindell, the Mike, the my pillow guy. You know, people don't know that he was a crack addict. And nothing will, uh, nobody... Nobody needs sleep more than someone who's been on crack for a few days. And so I'm not shocked, really, that the man came out with that uh, that headrest, baby. You know what I'm saying? That fucking synthetic goose, baby. That rest piece, that pillow, dog. Praise God, baby. Let's hear another one. Here we go. Onward. Yo, what's up, Rat King? It's uh, Dylan from Mobile, Alabama. What's up, Dylan from Mobile, and Mobile's a good place to uh to kind of drink coffee and kind of wish you were maybe somewhere else. Let's hear more. You know that port city hitter. But uh I think a nice senior quote would be uh one of the teachers is having an affair with students or something like that, you know. Stir up some shit before you leave, dude. You only hey, got one go at it. Hey man, man. wild. <laughs> but uh shout out to you, bro. Uh fucking funniest dude in the game. Hope you come back down here, man. I know he's in Biloxi for the Dark Arts Tour. Hopefully you come back, bro. Love you. Gang, gang. Gang, bro. Thanks, Dylan, man. And yeah, I love, uh, I got a, uh, a step stepsister named Holly that lives over there in Spanish Fort, Alabama. And um, I guess, I don't know what it is. I think they had, I don't know why Spanish Fort is what it is. I don't know enough about it, but. Mobile's getting better. The beaches, they're really starting. They're doing all they can to really beach it out. Um, you know, you'll see like a, it's a it's a place you could kind of find a fuck. You could find barbecue near a palm tree. Mobile's that weird, it's that weird little, uh, it's kind of like a transgender type of um, uh, like land. Like, you know, it's beach, but it's country, but it's sandy, but it's... um tropical um there's like cannonballs like you could like you know there's a lot of like vague civil war gift shops but you're not really sure what it's for and they'll have like a seashell in it just a lot of stuff that doesn't you know it's a it's a hodgepodge if you will um but if you get lost downtown it's nice and I got lost down there, and I was really surprised at how nice it was one time. But thank you for calling in, Dylan. And that's another great uh, great quote right there. Leave by starting something, you know? Say, just be straight up, man. Mr. Herbadash touched me once. Say that. You know? Say, uh, Scotty used to bang Miss uh, Randolph. Say, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, leave a little bit of, uh, leave the light on for people. Hit them with that fucking Motel 6 in their crotch, you know? Say, hey, Miss, uh, Jerifola 
was fine as hell, baby. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Do a little something. I like your attitude. Start a little something, you know? Say, hey, I hid $200 in Mr. Vleet's Honda Civic. Gang, let's go. Uh, we got one more that came in for you. Let's hear it. What up, Rat King? This is Brian calling from California. California Brian. In California, man, it's a good place for somebody to uh, get angry at you about not having a mask on while a homeless fella gives birth to them freaking, bu- you know, them rear body babies, dog. Only six or seven feet away from you, praise God. Let's hear more, Brian. Cisco Bay Area. Uh, I was calling because you were asking about a high school senior quote. And a couple came to mind when I was listening. The first one is from the Louisiana bad boy, the Rat King, Mr. Theo Vaughn. Mm -hmm. I think it's words to live by. Right in there. Be good to yourself. You probably deserve it. Amen. If I could go back, write those words, that's much better than whatever I wrote. Something stupid that I thought was funny at the time. But you live by those words, and I honestly think that that's going to make you happier. Now, the other quote... Probably not school. And that's true, man. You know, it's so funny how many guys I'll, I'll, I'll run into and, and, and women occasionally, but mostly men, and and will just share that back to me. Say, be good to yourself. You know, be good to yourself. It's hard, isn't it? It's hard, Brian. It's hard to be good to ourselves. Um... And I don't know if it's because we spend so much time around ourselves. I don't know if it's that you got to be tougher on who you, you know. But it's hard. It's hard, man. So thank you for that well that well wish, baby. Now let's uh, let's hear the other one. I think that that's going to make you happier. Now the other quote, probably not school appropriate, but it was the clip you played after the high school senior called in. And some elderly woman was screaming at somebody. And she said, if I want to fuck, I can fuck. It ain't nobody business but mine. If your school will let you print it, also, good words to live by. But that's it, man. I'm hope, I hope this senior can find something good. I would go with the Rat King. And uh, I hope you be good to yourself, man. You deserve it. Gang, brother. Thanks, Brian. I like that second one, man. I'm going to play yours again. If I want to fuck, I can fuck. It ain't nobody business but mine. (laughs) There you go, baby. There you go. And we should start a senior yearbook for actual seniors. That's what it should be. Somebody should just make a yearbook of all the old people in their town and say, this is our senior yearbook, and you go around and get them to sign it now. You know what I'm saying? People be writing real stuff. You know? That would be amazing just to get, you know, to really get, uh, to just really, just to capture that last hurrah. And then you compare it. Or maybe like our high school should come back years later and get a quote later on. You know? That's what they should do. But those are great, man. Those are really nice suggestions for Zatch. And I think that um, the good thing also is that uh, we have a montage of other ones that came in. And we'll put that uh, at the end of the episode so you guys can check that out. And, and thank you for being a part of this past weekend and a part of um, a part of our lives here. I want to thank you for that. I also want to tell you right now about the zebra and about insurance or insurance. Look, I got it. I got into a home recently, and I was like, "Damn, I gotta. What if everything burns down? You know, if you're in an apartment or you're renting, you don't care if something burns down. Like, who gives a shit? You probably started the fire. Hell, a lot of times I'm shocked shit didn't burn down. But now, every time I leave home, I need to head back home. You know, to make sure that the oven isn't on or." That the you know didn't leave the heater on. Just all the some. There's too many things that could happen. 
I just worry, like, is, is, is everything going to be okay? It's, well, who can help you now is the Zebra, the nation's leading insurance comparison site for car and home insurance, man. For car and home. Where are you at usually? In your car or in your home? Don't just live willy-nilly. Live insured. They can help you save money today. When you use thezebra.com, insurance finally feels like it's in black and white. That zebra, baby. No more confusion. You can secure your insurance from thezebra.com or over the phone from one of their licensed insurance agents. How much money can you save on your car or home insurance? They said that uh, Americans uh, overspend by a billions of dollars on those two items. Change it up. Yep, visit thezebra.com slash T-H-E-O. That's T-H-E-Z-E-B-R-A dot com slash Theo for insurance in black and white. Yeah, you got to get insured and be insured well. Don't get no nasty insurance. You know, sometimes you get that nasty insurance. Like you'll call them if you get nasty medical. Hey, this nasty medical, how can we help? You're like, oh, I, 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 I fell off the roof, man, my neck, you know. My my leg is stuck in my my neck. Like, all right, we send, all right, we send, we'll send somebody over, man. We'll send Clarence over. You're like, Clarence, what? Clarence, what? And then Clarence shows up, man. He's in a Ford F two fifty, bro, and he got speakers in that bitch. And you, he can't even lift you. He real small, you know. He played point guard, bro, but only in JV. He real small. He can't even lift your body, and you got a bad leg. Your leg's stuck in your neck. You got a uh, neck leg. You got neck leg, baby. And so, damn, bro. Now you got a fucking jump up in the back of the truck on your one good leg and he rides you over there and he's playing 50 cent the whole time get him up book get him up book holla book 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 he's going down and you're in the back like oh damn you bleeding out back there go shawty it's your birth and you bleeding out they got blood dripping out the back of the truck and little Clarence trying to get to the hospital, bro. But he had to stop for gas, dog. Don't end up with nasty medical. Get the good stuff. That's all I'm telling you. Speaking of the good stuff, man, you need Fabletics, bro. Meet me to help my Fabletics. You know, there's a lot of different uh, opportunities for men to wear clothing. And unfortunately, men have always worn stuff. If you look back through time, even only on the first few pages of the Bible is men naked. And then one of the men kills the other men. And that at that point, they said, damn, we got to blouse up. And so what happened was uh, clothing. And so what happened was clothing. And so people started getting clothed. And now you got fabletics, man. Fabletics men represents for every guy who wants to look and feel his best without breaking the bank. You can't be spending thousands on a t-shirt or thousands on a uh, sneaker or a, a leg brace or something if you're handicapped. That's right. This means Lululemon quality for half the price because guys deserve to work out in good quality stuff. Go to Fabletics, F-A-B-L-E-T-I-C-S dot com slash Theo. That's right. For access to insane deals, get your first two pairs of shorts for just $24 when you become a Fabletics Men VIP member at checkout. Become a Fabletics Men VIP member at checkout. All styles, all colors, no exclusions. You talking top quality, top of the line. Stuff that they would wear in Rome. And now it's available to you. The best active wear at the best prices. At least 20 to 50% off retail prices every time you shop. Get free shipping on all orders over $49. That's right. Go to Fabletics. F-A-B-L-E-T-I-C-S dot com slash T-H-E-O for access to an insane deal. Um, 
man, I just can never decide if I should wear a hat or not. You ever get like that? You leave, you put the hat on, you try it. You're like, oh, I feel like I just, I don't like having the hat on. So I'm going to try the hat off. I'm going to try it backwards. And then you're like, oh, am I too old to have a hat on backwards? You know, do I look like I'm, you know, trying to sell sports equipment or what's going on and then you so you go no hat all right how do i do no hat do my hair look okay do i seem decent do i seem clean i always think that come on mom would say you look dirty when i was young you look dirty all right let's get into a couple of uh of calls right here that came in and um as always the hotline 985-664-9503 you can submit videos on uh, theovon.com here we go yo Theo it's Caleb kind of over Scottsdale Kentucky man my little brother he got me turned on listening to this past weekend King of the Stain just anything Theovon you know what I'm saying well praise God brother and thank you for uh, for reaching out from uh, Stockstill, Kentucky and um and I never been over there, but Kentucky. I used to do steroids, and I know that uh, that sometimes people have done those also in Kentucky. Let's hear more. But he's got a little problem with smoking the uh, devil's lettuce. You know, I used to be pretty hardcore on all the dope, and uh, trying to get him to quit. He's got a good head on his shoulders, but I mean, he just can't get he just can't put down. The daggum green beans. I mean, I, I don't know. I've, I've told him everything, cussed him, been his buddy. I don't really know what to do. And I think if the Theo Vaughn called this little some bitch and says, hey, man, quit smoking the dope, killing your brain cells, he might actually quit. I don't Well, look, man, I'm going to tell you this. I appreciate you. Uh, I think it's nice that you care enough about your brother to care about what he's doing. You know, and it's hard at some ages because some ages people are going to blow their lungs out or blow their liver out or blow their dick out even. Sometimes if they're being nasty or whatever or they got AIDS or anything like that or getting AIDS. But, um, you know, I mean, weed is a tough one. Weed is a tough one. Because... You know, sometimes people just have to run their course with it. And it's safer. It's better than other drugs. You know, it's better than somebody doing a bunch of heroin or a bunch of, um, you know, cocaine or crack. It's better than that in the sense that it's, you know, they more calmer. And that's nice. But yeah, sometimes you want to get them off. It. Sometimes you can lose a sibling or a friend and, and they get real depth up into the weed. And they like a damn swamp. It's like talking to, they so plan it out. You know, all they're doing is just kind of sitting there like a plant. They kind of become what they smoke. They sit in there and they kind of are unique, but they're really just a fucking plant. And they want water and then they, uh, you know, they, um, and that's it, man. They just want some water because they're so high. So... I think here's one thing that I'd use to help quit. I just quit. I quit smoking cigarettes, you know, about almost a year ago now. Dude, actually, in April, it'll be a year. Wow. And the thing that helped me quit, I was in Kauai, man. Kauai, Hawaii. And a man, I met a man by a smoothie shop, and he was a shaman. You know, he was an off work smoothie guy, shaman guy. And next thing you know, him, him and his old lady got me back at their joint. They got a, you know, kind of a low key child care kind of center also, but they smoke, they have DMT over there. And they had that 5-MEO DMT, that smoky treat, baby, that brain smoothie. You know what I'm talking about? That fucking turn your whole life into a damn skill crane, baby. And the claw of the Lord comes out and just picks things out of you that he don't want to be there anymore. And one of the things that the Lord's mighty arm picked right out of me was my desire to smoke cigarettes. 
Because DMT, I find it'll put the wheels on your wants. Sometimes your very core has wants inside of it. It has things it wants to do. And it, they just it don't, it don't have the wheels. It don't have the downhill. It don't have the gradient. But that DMT will get in there and do that dirty work. You know? It'll tickle your sister but buy her a house. You know what I'm saying? It does the things that you can't really, you don't want to do. And that's what it did for me, man. It got inside of me. And I went from literally each day I'd be in my head like, okay, am I going to? And I wasn't a heavy smoker, but I'd smoke a couple at night. And I had a crutch. I would smoke when I didn't want to. That was it. I would smoke when I didn't want to. And anytime I had a problem or an uncertainty or a non-surety or anything, I would just I would go smoke. I would, it became my God in a weird way. When I had a question, a worry, a thought, a concern, a, or a positive feeling, let's smoke, let's smoke. Oh, let's celebrate, let's smoke. Oh, damn, bummer, let's smoke. It became where I went when I had a feeling of any sort. So it was so nice when it disappeared. I mean, literally, it just, that 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 five-course meal, baby, that 5-MEO DMT just took it completely out of my, my history. And so that's what I think that that kind of stuff can do. It's that, uh, it's the librarian inside of you that we all need. So I don't know if that helps to suggest that your brother smoke DMT to quit smoking weed, but... But also, I think he has, you have to want it. That's what I'm saying. I think he puts the wheels on your wants. So if he wants it, it can happen. If he don't want it, then I think it, it won't happen. It has to be a want that's been, ha that's been occurring in, in your background. You know, it, it has to be a want that's just sitting on the stem of your spine waiting for a ride home. But you, you, don't, you don't have the power to make it happen. And that DMT does that dirty work. That's what it does. So I think that um, that that's a possibility. But sometimes you got to let people run their course with drugs. Uh, so, but I'm sorry. I just think, I think overall it's just nice that you care what's going on with your brother at all. You know? And I think, I think things are okay in moderation if he can handle it. Uh, but if he wants to quit and he can't, then that's when I think that um, that DMT could be the answer for and could possibly save y'all's brothership. So, all right, we had we had uh, we had this video come in right here. Um, thank you guys for submitting this from uh, TikTok. Let's go. My number one requested thing to cook: catfish cubion. I'm hydrated. I'm motivated. Let's get it, dude. Okay, and here you got a man. This is a real, this is like an indoor, outdoor man. And this man is like a chef. Let's hear more of this. And this guy, I see the Louisiana flag in the background. He's a Louisiana guy. Let's hear it again. My number one requested thing to cook, catfish cubion. I'm hydrated. I'm motivated. Let's get it, dude. We got a half a cup of butter, half a cup of flour. We're making a blind colored roux. Let's get it, dude. Holy Trinity and some garlic. You got your onion sweating down, you hit it with your vegetable juice and your homemade seafood stock. You got it to a rolling ball, add your stewed tomatoes and your tomato paste. Bay leaves, green olives, fresh lemons. Add the Creole seasoning you like and a little two-step. We let it simmer for 25 minutes and while we wait, eh, we hydrate. Oh, that's alcoholism. Parsley, green onions. Pull out your lemons, your bay leaves, and lay down your beautiful Louisiana blue cat. Mm. At this point, don't stir, just sink them down. Yeah, you can't see the video, but he's literally pushing pieces of blue cat down into the um into the sauce with a boat oar. Amen. Mm. Catfish could be on a cracker. That's money, dude. There you go. And so this is a man, this is a Louisiana type man. You see some of this dude got an eight ball of Lawry seasoning in his pocket, bro. You know what I'm saying? This dude will this dude will boil your sister's tits right here. 
This dude will straight up boil your sister's tits, man. He's about that life, bro. He's about that fire, that fucking uh, tit right off the bone life, dog. That's who he is, bro. This is the kind of dude he'll invite you over for a hot tub. You realize you in the hot tub. Next thing you know, an onion goes by, a lemon, an artichoke goes by, and you realize you you about to be lunch, boy. You know what I'm saying? This dude has alternate plans. Uh, what I love about this guy, he's one of those type of guys you see in Louisiana. He's he's every neighborhood has this guy, and you need this guy. This dude is the chef. By the week, he works at the Chase Bank or he works over there at Whitney Bank or Regions Bank or whatever. But on the, suddenly the weekend hits and he's due. You know what I'm saying? He's fucking, he got a Bunsen burner and he's grilling, uh, you know, he'll have a damn uh, a, a cigarette lighter and be cooking up a piece of damn crab meat with it. You know, they get wild like that, guys like this. And if you notice, he uses all the vowels. In Louisiana, they got a lot of extra vowels. You know, you got A, E, I, O, U, E, L, R, E, R, E, L, Y, E, L, R, O, Y, E, R, O, Y, E, I, I. Yeah, this is the kind of dude asks for a spice rack and a divorce settlement kind of guy. You know, this guy. This is the kind of guy, he only have one uh, hand because he probably was doing a boil one time and he dropped one of his, um, he dropped his car keys in it, uh, boil and he reached in for him on accident, reflexing. He did a, you know, he just had a reflection and now he only got one hand, but it still works. So he's, you know, he's thankful to God, Brian, all the swamp gods. So yeah, man, this is a good talk. Thanks for sending this in. Uh, and I will say this, the food looks absolutely amazing. And I would try, I, I, I might have to try this. Dustin uh, Poirier, this looked like somebody, this guy looked like he's probably in Dustin Poirier's family or from his neighborhood. And I would guarantee that. So that's a little bit of Louisiana fire right there. All right, let's take another call that came in right here, man. As always, 985-664-9503. Hey, Theo, this is Chad from Chicago. Hey, man, listen, I'm sitting here driving home from work, and I'm trying to figure out the answer to this question somebody asked me. And they asked me, do you think you own the clothes that you're going to die in? Not the clothes that you're going to be buried in, the ones where when the when the grizzly bear eats you, what clothes are you wearing? Mm. And... uh I don't know. I don't know if I if I do, or I don't know if I want to know if I do. Uh, but I'd love to hear your thoughts. I mean, I don't wear a lot of clothes anyway. Okay. Well, the end part, that's really... That's getting personal, I think, brother. But, well... Let me think. Do you... That's a good question. What clothes you want to, you know, head on out in? What's that last hero for you, for your body? You know, when do you get, you know, because you got to give up the cage sometimes. I realized more and more recently that I'm a bird in a cage, man. Despite all my rage, bro. I am still just a rat in a cage, actually. That's what the man said. But, um... I realize that my body is just a thing that I'm in. I'm I'm in my head. I'm looking out of my eyes. That's where my spirit is. I'm, you know, my body is just this kind of like, it has this color and texture and, and vibe to it. And, you know, I got the rib cage of a damn large cat, really. But, you know, this is who I am. But, um... Will I have the clothes that I'm gonna die in? I don't, you know, it, it's tough. It's t yeah, because who, you know, they show up, they see, oh, he died in that. Yeah, I guess I would, you know, I have green eyes. I guess I would like to have like a green shirt on, maybe, or something that's blue or gray. But um, I don't want to have like somebody else, like a, you know, like a Darren Sharper jersey or a Marshawn Lattimore jersey on. 
I guess in Chicago, maybe it's probably kind of cool if you die on like an Erlacher jersey. That might be kind of cool. Um, so yeah, I get. I, I don't know. It's tough. It's tough to know what's the best thing to die in, and if I own those clothes already. I guess you have to think of what when you're gonna die. When is your year? You know, I don't. I go through phases. I go through phases where I feel like I'm gonna be really old, and then I go through phases where I'm like, oh man. You know, I hope there's. You know, is this thing ever gonna show up? You know what I'm saying? Like when I hear the doorbell, I'm like, oh, maybe it's the <laughs> Grim Reaper. Oh, uh, so yeah, that's a good question, man. Do I have those clothes? I, 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 I. You know what? I think I do. Cause I I don't wear a lot of different stuff. I'm pretty minimal when it comes to that. You know, I'm not like Brennan Schaub. He has to get like a new, you know, a fucking new bat skin hat every time he goes to um, Toledo or something. So I don't I don't need all of that. I'm a little bit more simplistic. Uh, so I bet I probably do have it, man. But thank you for asking and making sure I'm okay and if I have enough stuff to die in. Um, let's take another call that came in, man. And you know what? Actually, all right, we got a single mom submission right here uh, that came in. Somebody uh, came and somebody recommended this beautiful lady. Uh, and let's see this video, gang. Hey, this is Travis from the Bay Area. I just want to uh, nominate my friend Krista. And her three little hellion kids for the mm. single moms. Um, she's a badass. Okay. I'm sorry, it's loud. I hear building a bridge. Oh damn! And it's a bridge worker. If you can't see the video, this man working bridge right here. And a bridge is just a road that's fucking brave as fuck, dog. If I'm honest with you. Other roads look at a bridge and be like, damn. I bet he gets all the britches. You get it? Bridge, bitches. Um, but yeah, man, a bridge is just really, it's a fucking road with some balls, baby. Gang, let's go. Um, but yeah, Krista, her three kids, she's uh, put herself through school. She's put them through hell of sports, and uh, she does it all on her own. So oh, man. if you can at least give her a shout out or anything, uh, that'd be awesome. Uh, gang, gang, Theo Vaughn, you're the man, dude. Uh, watch your show every week. Thanks. Oh, thank. And later. Thanks, bro. Well, it's nice of you to be thinking about somebody else today, man. I appreciate that out of you. And um, and thanks. Yeah, let's see if we can't call Chris up and see what's going on. Um, make sure. okay. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what's up, Krista? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, hold on one second. I can't hear you. I'm not like a pervert or anything. I just, um, this isn't like chat roulette or anything. I'm just trying to say hey to you. Now I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, how are you today? I am doing well. How are you? Good. I don't want to let you know I'm not like a weirdo. I'm not with the government or anything. But um, I was just calling you because they had a fella, uh, this guy. Hey, this is Travis. A guy named Travis. Do you know him? Yeah, I do know him. He's a white guy. He works on a bridge. Yeah. Well, he, um, I work on a podcast. My name's Theo and I work on a podcast and he said, we do a thing sometimes where we, where we reach out and do something nice for single moms. And he said, oh, well, I know this lady, she's a single mom and she works really hard and she has, um, you know, three great kids. And, um, I was raised by a single mom. So, um, yeah, every now and now and then we just try and like uh just give back to the community so we just wanted to give you a thousand bucks to go do something fun with your kiddos and Are you uh, serious? yeah i'm totally serious so we just thought it would be it's just nice that he thought of you actually you could tell he must think pretty highly of you so my god thank you so much oh you're really welcome um what do your kiddos like to do what kind of kids you got anyway men or women I got two boys and a little girl. Okay, you got two boys and a girl? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. What ages are they? Nine, seven, and five. Oh, dang. Yeah. Oh, my God. I can't believe you're even alive then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot of pressure. Yeah, my, my siblings, we were all two years apart. Um, 
So yeah, it's like Fight Club some days. Yeah, I bet it, I bet it is like Fight Club. We should start especially recording at bedtime. it. Oh, especially <laughs> at bedtime. That's yeah. funny. Where do you work at? Are you working today? Or are you off today? I am working today. I work at um, GI Consultants in Reno. Oh, y'all live in Reno? Yeah. Oh, yeah, boy. I've been over to Reno. Dude. Reno is a lot of AA meetings, a lot of people donating blood. Baby, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. I've been to some meetings over in Reno, boy. <laughs> That's a wild place. So um, have y'all lived there y'all's whole life? No, we just moved here. I moved here with the kids about a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. So I just totally relocated us because it was getting way too expensive where we were in Santa Cruz. Oh, yeah. It gets kind of pricey out there, huh? Yeah. So I just relocated us on a hope that everything was going to work out. Dang. And how do you know Travis? How do you know him? Travis and I have known each other for, let's see, maybe like eight years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We used to get in trouble together and now we don't. Yeah. I feel but he's always he's always been one of my best friends. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, you could yeah. tell he thinks he must think pretty highly of you. Um it was just sweet of him. He 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 sent in a nice little video, so you'll be able to see it if if if, if he shares this with you one day. But um okay. <laughs> Yeah, but we don't want to take up a bunch of your time. We just thought that uh it was just really nice of him and um yeah, I just remember when I was young, if somebody would have reached out to my mom and just done something, just a little extra sometime, just just maybe take the edge off for a week, you know? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Oh, that's so amazing. Well, look, give Travis a hug for us when you see him. And, uh, and um, yeah, what you going to go do? Go do something fun with the kiddos. What do they like to do? So my little girl likes to do literally anything and everything, but the boys are getting real into baseball. So I'm going to see, maybe I can find them some baseball -y to do or outdoors. We're starting to get some nice weather. So. Yeah, that's fun. Do they play yeah. in any of those little leagues yet or no? No. Well, my son does junior. My older one's done junior giants because it's the free one. Oh, yeah. So I've had him doing that because I'm like, well, I'm not going to pay a bunch of money if you're not into it. I'd rather you not be into it if it's free. Yeah. And we check it out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Those organized sports, I think, is fun. I think kids really dig that, you know? Yeah. They're doing really good. They are? Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. My middle one just decided to take a break from gymnastics, which, thank God, it's expensive. So he's trying. He's, he's thinking about his life, he said, to decide what he wants to do. Oh, damn. That must be uh, nice. I was like, damn, you're seven. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have going on? <laughs> well, I don't know, but I'm 41, and he and I apparently have the same thing going on. So <laughs> oh I can totally relate to that young fella. I'm like, you're going to be doing that for a long time, buddy. Just, just pick <laughs> yeah. that curricular activity. That's all I need you to do. What do you feel like doing? You want to kick a ball? Do you want to hit a ball? What do you want to do? <laughs> yeah, I think the less thinking about it he can do and just the more doing it, the better off he'll be probably. Right. right. Um, well, uh, thanks so much for answering our call today. And uh, yeah. yeah, my producer Nick will follow up with you. And you look lovely. And it's nice to see you today. Oh, thank you. And um and and uh yeah tell uh tell Travis we said hey when you see him. I will I will. Okay, Risa, t take care. Have a good day. You too. Thank you so much. Oh yeah, you're so welcome. Y'all have Thank fun. You. Hey, okay. send us a picture if you do something fun with the kiddo. Send us a picture. No pedof we ain't pedophiles or nothing. We're just regular okay, people. Okay, perfect. I totally will. Okay, cool. I totally will. Okay, thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. Have a good day. Okay, bye bye. Bye. Yeah, she seemed like a sweet lady, man. Yeah, I think just a little moment of reprieve for somebody. You know, a moment of reprieve for her to just be able to think. You know, just to be able to love your kids without uh, that extra stress of. And I, I'm not saying we're doing a ton. We're not changing anybody's life. But. Just to have a moment, man. I just think when I was a kid, if some man would have come by or a woman, anybody, and I'm sure people do look, the, the, the government does it, you know, you can get help and get assistance and we got all of that growing up and man, it just makes me feel, you know, it makes me feel grateful for time, really.
that time gives you the opportunity to go back and kind of see what's going on. So, um, yeah, time gives you the opportunity to kind of go back and, uh, you know, just sew up little tears in your own story by using the thread of, um, of each other. You know, in a weird way. And maybe that's selfish to think of it that way. It's not selfish, but maybe, you know, everything's selfish in a way, but it's just, you know, I don't know. It just makes me feel nice that, uh, that, you know, there'll be a little extra opportunity for them to do something fun together as a family. Um, and thank you guys for supporting this past weekend. Let's get another call that came in right here, man. Um, and uh, what do we got here? Hey, Theo, it's uh, Mike Ambrose calling from London, Ontario. Uh, Big Mike out of Canada, dog. And I don't know what y'all are doing up there, but shit, if it gets weirder down here, bro, I might come up there and join you, fam. Let's go, pop, pop, gang. Up here in Canada. I just love listening to your podcast, man. You do a great job. I mean, a lot of emotions every single episode, and, you know, who doesn't love that? Uh just, you know, got a, you know, maybe some tip you could help me out with. Uh, been a uh, semi-professional uh, baseball player for about, you know, four or five years now. Oh, yeah. And I know what you're saying. You mean doing drugs, baby. I feel you, baby. I used to say stuff like that. Oh, I'm a semi-pro ball player. People are like, oh, you're doing drugs. <laughs> so, but go on, brother. I feel you. Before that, you know, went to college, did the whole thing, um, especially being from Canada, it was tough, you know, going over the States to play ball. I lived in Australia for two years, um, time of my life, uh, but now, you know. Oh, yeah, and lived in Australia is obviously another term for doing drugs. Um, so, I feel you, baby, the code language, daddy. You know what I'm saying? Uh spending time at grandma's house i know what you're saying baby let's hear it you know, i just this past december on um, the, the 12th had a beautiful baby girl okay and you got that offspring now baby you got that offspring now you got something to worry about now you got a real rock to smoke daddy let's hear it and uh she's been you know absolutely amazing but i think it's time to you know now you know turn the page and start that family life i just wanted to know uh your thoughts you think i should just keep it keep it buzzing or should i uh you know sting it and hang out with the two ladies of my life uh keep it buzzing what are you talking about son okay you live in canada brother it ain't it ain't but you know what i'm saying the buzzing it ain't that insane you know what i'm saying what did, i mean you know as crazy as it gets is kind of ice cream you know what i'm saying like let's don't be uh you can't keep it. What are you going to do? You have a child now. What do you mean you're going to keep it buzzing? What are you going to do? You're going to keep playing pro ball, daddy? You're going to keep smoking rock? Huh? You're going to keep using? You're going to take care of your wife and kid, man. If it's your wife, I don't know. You didn't say you wasn't married up or you guys was nuptialed up. You know? And maybe the dope haze has been too heavy in you, daddy. But I believe that it's time, yeah. If you got something living that came out of your wiener, you gotta take you gotta take care of it, baby. You know, and I love you, Mike, and I feel like, you know, I don't want to be the one to, you know, serve you the cold cock, baby. You know, but consider me that freaking um that maitre dick. You you know what I'm saying? I'm that head waiter, baby, and I'm serving you that cold cock of truth, dog. And the truth is, yeah, there's no, you know, you got you to gotta settle, you got to tighten it up. You can't be sleeping in your car doing Canadian drugs, even though they're cheaper. Um, you know, when you get them direct, you know, we don't have to go through Big Pharma. But anyway, man, um, yeah, I wish you the best of luck, brother. I really do. And I hope you definitely, you know, you get it figured out up there. Praise God, baby. 
Okay, let's take another call here. Here we go. Hey, Theo, this is Scott again from Tennessee. What's up, Scott? And um, thank you for calling, brother, from Tennessee, man. And that is a unique state. It's a very long state. It's basically that sideways Florida, baby. Let's hear it. And I'm out here in Virginia. Okay, so now you moved to somewhere. Okay, all right, Scott. Working on storm crew. You know, taking care of all these hangers and all these dangerous limbs after storms. Okay, so you out there on that limb trek. And you out there checking lean wood, baby. I feel you. And reaching for lean wood, baby gang. And I just wanted to call and ask about how I can help my girlfriend trust me more while I'm out here. Mm-hmm. We have a lot of issues with that. She always thinks I'm not drinking with the guys when I'm really just at the hotel. And I just wanted to ask what you thought I could do to make her feel better about all this. Thank you very much. Gang, gang. Gang, baby. And thank you for reaching out, man. And look, we all know you're out drinking with the guys, Scotty, and that's fine. Nobody's, you know. Nobody's mad at you or anything like that. But, yeah, you got to make sure that your wife is content because they will steal stuff while you're gone, and they will. A lot of them will even do arson now. There's a lot of Mexican women and a lot of women in um, um, New Mexico doing arson. And, anyway, the bottom line here I'm seeing is, um, I mean, first of all, if you're in a tree every day and you're out there – hunting uh lambs and stuff chisel a little note to the you know scotty loves you know Teresa or whatever scotty loves diane put it in the wood man chisel it in there leave that advertisement out there snap her a photo send her that say here i just chiseled this into the side of a you know a birch out here outside of uh roanoke or whatever or virginia beach baby you know, I'm saying you could do stuff like that. When you get back to the hotel center, that picture, hey, here I am right here by the ice maker, by the Hampton Inn, baby, I'm chill. And so is this machine, you know? Cute little things like that. But yeah, some of it's, it's interesting. Sometimes we'll use jealousy also to express that we care. It could just be her saying, look, I care. But I'm afraid to s just say it like that. Instead, I do jealousy. Or I do, you know, trust. You know, they don't, they don't trust you. But it's hard, man, getting somebody's trust. You know, I've never been real good at it, man. You know, sometimes I think, I don't know if I want people to trust me in a weird way. Because trust, you have to have a, trust means there's a connection. Trust means... Trust is, there's responsibility. You know, trust is just that damn condiment. You know, on that responsibility bun, baby. And so, yeah, if you got trust with somebody, you're going to be, that's a lifetime, you know, it's a, that's an ongoing commitment that we're going to behave a certain way and we're going to communicate a certain way and honor each other's time and damn it sounds like a lot but i think an easy way to see if you could start man if you're real serious about it i've had times in my life i wasn't even real i would get a girl to trust me but at the same time be doing untrustful stuff being trustful untrustful Um, so it's tough, man, but I think, yeah, chisel or some shit into the tree, you know, Tommy loves Robin or whatever, you know, Scotty loves Vivian, so, you know, do something nice, do some cute little things like that. I think that could definitely help or get her one of those big Johnson t-shirts. Remember them? Go look at them on eBay's big Johnson. They got some cute stuff they make. Um, let's take one more call that came in, man. 
Here we go, 985-664-9503. And I'm going to let you know also that uh, the last website I've ever needed is now theovon.com, and that was made by a company called Modify. They do great business websites, and they have a new program called The Last Website You Will Ever Need. No cost to build, no contract, 45-day turnaround, unlimited revisions and support, easy editing tools, free redesign, satisfaction guaranteed. It's all for just $249 a month. Wow, that's a good deal. The last website you'll ever need. Visit modify, M-O-D-I-P-H-Y dot com slash Theo and get a $250 credit when you subscribe for your world-class website. Again, that's modify with a P-H, M-O-D-I-P-H-Y dot com slash T-H-E-O. Support small businesses that do a big job. They've done great for us. Modify dot com slash Theo. Let's hit this hot line right here here we go what's up Theo I uh I'm from North Carolina 16 years old and uh this morning I just got the news that my grandpa passed away oh man I'm sorry bro I'm sorry about that yeah 16 a lot of people you know grandparents are really I mean, they're the damn hamsters of the, uh, you know, of the family in a lot of ways. They, they'll kind of go out on you. Let's hear it. And it was really, really strange because, I mean, just a week ago, you know, I was sitting on his couch, mm. you know, talking to him. Mm. But, I mean, it's just so sudden that, I mean, I really don't even believe it. I mean, I haven't even cried or you know, been angry or anything. I just like, I can't believe it. But, uh, yeah, I just want to know how you deal with, you know, deaths that are just kind of unexpected and, you know, come out of nowhere. Well, you know, thanks for the call, man. And death, death is, uh, it's like high, It's like there's this force playing hide and go seek or playing freeze tag, and you didn't even know you were in it. You forget you're playing this game of freeze tag with time. And man, when it touches you, that's it. Must be so. Just to people who, when you get to, that's how it is. You know, it's like, oh, okay, it's my turn. Oh, all right, wow. Okay, I got it. There's no more. I got to. And you don't get to pack your things. That's got to be a wild part. I bet when people first say, hey, you know, if, if doctor tells you, you, you know, it's your time. It's your turn. I bet I go home and start to pack. Just out of habit. You know, I'm used to going somewhere or being somewhere. But, uh, but yeah, now it's like you get, you get that call and there's nothing to pack. All you can do is kind of pack almost as unpacking, you know, hopefully you have enough time to unpack your bullshit to unpack a, you know, a couple bags of forgiveness unpack a few apologies, unpack all the the fire you've been holding. You got to unpack it some. You know, I don't, I was at a, my grandparents didn't really, I don't know. My grandmother wasn't, wasn't super keen on me and so I didn't have much of a relationship with her as I got into my teens and stuff and But I've always had a strong affinity for seniors. You know, my father was a senior. And um, and so I've always had a, you know, a warm place in my heart for him. And it's interesting that 
a lot of older people, they kind of, I feel like a little bit they're ready to go. Because after you've done it all, after you've had all the tiramisu you've wanted and you've traveled to the places you wanted to go or were brave enough to take on the adventures you could take on, your shell, your body starts to die. So really, you're just this... You're almost like when you, whenever you see a firefly inside of a little lantern or something. Or like Tinkerbell on Peter Pan's. When you see it. The cage, the cage dies, man. But that hitter, baby, is that, that tinker, dog. That's the part that zips off to somewhere else. So... Your grandpa's probably happy to get out of that old ass cage, I bet. I bet that has to feel pretty freeing, you know? Almost like the first time you get to drive a car when you're... You know, in Louisiana, you could drive when you're 15 when I was a child. You could drive 15 years old. Some people hadn't even jerked off their own body and they were driving. Which was crazy. You'd ask somebody if they could bust out and they couldn't, but they could... You know, do reverse. You know, there's different times, but um. Anyway, man, I don't know what I'm telling. I don't know exactly what I'm telling you, but yeah, you got that tankers left in the tank, man. When the tank rusts, so really, I bet for your grandfather, it's like him. It's like the first time you got to go down the road and drive yourself. God, there's nothing like that. Just the freedom you feel like. I'm free. I'm free. I'm away from her. That, you're away from your parents. The first time you venture down the street. Before you get to the stop sign and you got to turn and make a decision and shit. It gets scary then. But before that. There's a, there's a little bit of space where you're like. Oh my God. Your folks are standing back in the driveway. And they don't know you know. And you're going. It's like, wow. I bet that's what it's like, man. It's just, you know, at that point, when you're young, you're getting, you know, you're shedding that skin of your parents' constant, you know, uh, nesting over you and um, you having to ask them for a ride or having to walk to work or do the bus. And now suddenly you... Living freelance. So I bet that's what it's like. Your grandpa. He's probably in that. You know. He's in that 1984 Ford Escort in the sky. And he's. Listening to some Abbey Road by the Beatles. Or some damn Nelly. And he's just feeling good bro. He's living. He's living again. So I bet there's some real, I bet he's off on a ride, man. So, you know, maybe do some shit to honor and wish him well, maybe. Yeah. And make the use, the most out of your cage while you got it. Make the most out of your cage while you got it, man. Um... I think we did pretty good, man. I think we did pretty good. You know. That's all I got. That's all I got. Uh, what a great song that we came in on. We got Heather McMahon is going to be in this week. Beautiful comedian. Out of uh, New York and Atlanta. We're trying to think of unique guests. If you think of somebody unique, let us know. Thank you so much for supporting this podcast. You know, I'm grateful to have uh, the opportunity to be here with you every week. And have continued to do this now for a couple years now. And um, man, the last year has been really hard, but you guys have really been there for me. And we've been there for each other, bro. And that's how we do it here. 
We do our best, I feel like, to just kind of keep it going. So I don't think we should stop that, you know. I'm going to wish everyone a happy early Easter. Um, you know, it's a nice time. It's really a, usually a beautiful time of year. I hope that springtime is starting to hit everyone. I remember going into an Easter party one time and they had this lady that lived by us and she was doing, she was female pedophile actually, but the guys she was seeing were 16 years old and they were big men. They were really, I mean, just bigger than regular men I'd seen. These men were, these boys were big and she would invite them over to do learning and stuff or spelling and they would just do sex or really drink. Or they would spell words like fucking. And um, they had an Easter party one time and I wandered in there. I was a kid and I'd sneak over there sometimes and get that. While they're all smoking cigarettes, I'd get as much cigarette smoke as I could into my mouth and shit. And just fucking feel alive, bro. God, it made me feel alive. And one time I sprayed mace in there. I didn't know. What was going on exactly, but I sprayed a little bit of mace in the air at the dance party when they were dancing. And, you know, if, if maybe 50 seconds later, a minute and 10 seconds later, people crying and pouring milk in their eyes. One guy kept pouring milk in his eyes, I remember. And, uh, you know, it's just, I don't know, it's a holiday time, man. I'm excited. I'm hoping to go to Baton Rouge, Louisiana and see my family. And I hope some of you guys get to spend time with your loved ones. Um, I'm off jujitsu right now for another week. My, all my ribs heal up. I think I have a fractured rib. Uh, so I'm just trying to make the most of the time, the downtime that I have. Um. And that's all that's going on with me. Thank you guys for the calls. Let me know what's going on with you. Thanks for the suggestions for the um, quote for the man. And uh, thank you guys for Patreon for supporting this past weekend. And uh, and you guys be good to yourself, man. You guys deserve it. This is The Come Up with Eddie 9V. And we'll put that video montage at the very end, guys. Gang. I'm on a come up. Yeah. Feels real good after I've been so blue. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm on a come up. up. So good to have a brand new view. Come on now. Oh, yeah, Let's yeah, go. Yeah. Well, I just broke up with my baby. Now I can finally get the love in you. Come on. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Well, I just moved up to Lucky Street when the mayor came and said to me, You're on the come up. He's on the come up. To see between you and me, we got so much love and in chemistry. It's bound to come up. It's gonna come up. Well, good things keep on coming, and there ain't gonna be no running. No, oh, I'm gonna come, come up. It's gonna come up. Well, I just got home and now I'm back. I got so many people asking where I'm at. I've been to Tennessee and Ohio.
man right there that's uh that come up with eddie nine v you guys be good to yourselves man y'all deserve it thank you what's up theo it's jack in indiana here we got a young man who uh needs a little help on a senior quote for his yearbook uh i'm gonna let him i'm gonna let him plagiarize mine real quick so I'll, I'll, my little advice to you if you're gonna do a senior quote is uh just keep it short and simple but keep it slick you know you want something to to make the girls in 10 years be like, damn, I wonder what he's up to nowadays, man. He's kind of slick, you know? So just keep it short and simple. Give a little something like, I'm the man of the hour. Too sweet to be sour. Gang. Hi, my name's Kevin. I'm from Toronto, Ontario. I have two suggestions. My first is from Youthio, which is um, an event is like regular time, only more special, which I think is fairly profound. And then my second is one that I used when I was in um, my senior year. And that's um, Andrew Santino is a stupid, ugly ginger. Gang, gang. What's going on, Theo? My name's Alex. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. I got a suggestion for Zachary's yearbook quote. I think it should be the classic Goodfellas. All my life growing up, I always wanted to be a gangster. I think that would be pretty cool to put in the yearbook. Uh, hope this makes it on the show. Thanks, man. What up, Theo? This is Ryan. Minneapolis Mantis, baby. Uh, listening to your episode today uh, about uh, and the guy called up about the uh, yearbook quote. My yearbook quote was, of all my friends, I am the leader. And a lot of my friends didn't appreciate that shit, and uh, it didn't go well. But I still think it's funny. I, I still get a kick out of that, and I'm I'm still glad I did it. So to that young buck out there looking for a quote, do something that uh, you know you're gonna you're gonna find uh, entertaining or, or or funny or whatever in the future, and don't worry about your friends because chances are you're not gonna have those friends, uh, you know, 20 years from now, or whatever. All right, that, that's it. Thanks, Theo. Love you, buck.